This is Jonathan Hansen. I'm the president of World Ministries International. I want to welcome you to the Warning Television program. Those that are also listening on radio or shortwave and social media, uh, welcome. We're at the Chapel of World Ministries International. This is a live audience, staff and families and friends. And I'm going to speak today on growing your faith. Growing your faith. Now the heroes of the scriptures all made their choices and decisions in life by faith. They all made it by faith. The heroes of the Bible. The most famous chapter in, in the Bible is Hebrews chapter 11. They had their faith grow. Their, quote, measure of faith, unquote, grew from, quote, little faith into great faith, unquote. So everybody has a measure of faith. That's why they're going to be accountable on Judgment Day. Everybody is born with a measure of faith. What do we do with that measure of faith? In these troubling and dangerous times, each person's, quote, measure of faith, unquote, must grow from little faith into great faith. If they're going to experience peace and see miracles. Because things are all around us that try to take away our peace. Take away our joy. Take away our happiness. Get you depressed. Get you discouraged. Satan would like nothing better than you to commit suicide. But every one of us has a measure of faith and it must grow from little faith into great faith if we want to experience constant peace, if we want to see miracles. So again, my message is growing your faith. Every believer receives the same, quote, measure of faith, unquote, when we are born again. We all get a measure of faith. That measure can be increased by exercising it regularly and following the principles of increase the Bible teaches us to do. You'll notice in the Bible that people's faith either grew, stayed the same, or they remained with little faith and sometimes no faith. You know, the, the parable of the talent. If you use it, it's increased, it's doubled. If you fail ever to use it, it can be taken away. There is a point that we don't exercise faith at all. We ignore the word of God, the spirit of God. Nothing can convict us because if the Holy Spirit can't convict us, that's the unpardonable sin. You can go to church your whole life, your whole life. Hear the word of God your whole life. But if you reach a point you're living in sin and nothing can convict you, the word can't convict you, the Holy Spirit can't convict you, you have committed the unpardonable sin. You have no more faith. You're literally the walking dead. Again, everybody has a measure of faith. It must grow from little faith into great faith. Romans 12, 3. Let's look at it. For I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Now, God has not created this a giant apostle and this one with no faith. No. No. We all have a measure of faith and what we do with it to increase it or decrease it is up to us. And God uses you according to your faith. It's like if a person has a handgun. You might never know how to use a handgun. But you have hands, you have eyes, you can learn. So how you apply and learn and grow in that usage determines whether you become a novice or an expert. 
but it's up to you. Take it. A fisherman, the same thing. Gabe's not here today, but uh, or I would expound a little bit more. Now, Gabe is a good fisherman. He always catches his fish, usually. We've all, many of us have benefited from his fishing by giving us fish, especially salmon. But we all have a measure of faith. Through the grace given to me, through the grace. In other words, yes, your faith can grow into great faith, but still, it's from the grace of God, isn't it? A measure of faith is the grace of God. We should not boast. So we can, we can strive and do what the Bible says to do and to increase our faith, but still, it's the grace of God any way you look at it. We should not take the glory to ourselves or, or believe we're somebody great. It's still the grace of God. Because when you do that, that shows you don't have much faith if you are bringing the glory to you, if, if, if it's you, you know, selfishness, pride. That's the opposite of faith. Pride is the opposite of faith. That's what makes people choose to disobey God is their pride. Cain's pride rejected faith and rebelled against God. So we don't want pride to rule us or you will not have much faith. Point number one, everyone has faith. 2 Thessalonians 1.3 we are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting. Because your faith grows exceedingly. And the love of every one of you all abounds toward each other. Wow. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting because your faith grows exceedingly. So here... Apostolic leadership is so happy because the body of believers, the ecclesia, are growing in their faith. I mean, any, any parent wants their child to grow. You, you want your child to grow. You want them to learn responsibility. And uh, so as it is with faith. Spiritually, the Lord wants us to grow. You may have heard someone say in a religious tone of voice, quote, all you need is a little bit of faith in a great big God, unquote. Well, nice saying, but it's a little inaccurate. It's a nice saying. It's sort of a cop-out if you don't want your faith to grow. All you need is a little bit of faith in a great big God. Well, let's, let's examine that a little bit. Let's uh, unravel the scriptures. But did Jesus teach that little faith can obtain big results? I don't see it. Let's look at an example of little faith and see the outcome from an incident in the life of Apostle Peter as he tried to obtain big result with little faith. You know, Peter, his name, number one problem until he finally conquered it, is he had a big mouth. Why? Because he was a, a very proud man. And that big mouth always argued with God, even Jesus argued. People with a lot of pride always seem to fight God. Through the word of God, through pastors, through other means, those in authority, they resist, they cause trouble. Matthew 14, 22 through 31. Immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boats and go before him to the other side. While well, he sent the multitudes away. When he had sent the multitudes away, he went up in the mountain by himself to pray. Okay, so what did he do? One, he wanted to get his disciples away from the multitudes. Because even though we, you minister, we all minister, we still have to get by ourselves and rejuvenate our batteries, our faith. And Jesus did the same thing. Not only did he get his disciples away, he himself, it says, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. I mean, you can minister to your staff, 
Different ones of us have had staff in this room. But still, you have got to take care of yourself. Or your staff will burn you out. Right? If you have employees, you know what I'm talking about. They'll burn you out if you don't get away yourself to take care of yourself. Now, when evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now, in the fourth water watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. So here Jesus made his disciples get into a boat. They wanted to go. He wanted to take them to the other side. So the multitudes could not continue to pull on their strength. Ministry, as you pray, you know, when I'm praying and virtue comes out of me, it starts to hurt. It starts to hurt if I do it long enough for hours and hours and hours. Mike and I, and I don't know if EJ was with us, but in, I remember in, um, in Jamaica after traveling for hours and hours and then we ministered for five hours to a tent of 5,000 people. And um, it's one of those things you just, if it happens, it happens. I have not seen this more than twice. And the enemy tried to stop us, Satan, along the way. Four flat tires and most people would have quit. And we, we looked at each other and, I mean, one time a dump truck rolled right in front of us. And I think it was Mike said, you know, we're going to have great meetings tonight. Because the enemy tried to stop us, tried to actually kill us. Well, we got in there and, and the song service was over and they were actually just singing songs to delay, you know, to delay until I got there. And then I just walked right up on there. I preached a very prophetic message. Repentance came. A lot of people came to the altar and then we started praying. And prayed until midnight. And I'm everybody, everybody under the tent was healed. And I couldn't stop praying. Even though I was hurting, I would have to kneel down and Mike and others would pray for me. And I think Mike or somebody said, you better quit, Pastor. You're going to kill yourself. And I was, I, I was crying and I said, how can we quit, Mike? Everyone is getting healed. I mean, the blind, totally blind, healed. Uh, the totally deaf, healed. I mean, how do you, how do you stop that? But it, ministry hurts. Virtue, if you're really praying for people, virtue comes out of you. Jesus had to get himself away, even from his own disciples, and rejuvenate. So here, the fourth watch of the night, Jesus is walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled. It is a ghost. That's what happens when we don't have much faith, too much pride, now, we can't even see Jesus or the supernatural. We see a ghost or demons. All of it comes if we have too much pride and not enough faith. Here, they, they, they thought Jesus was a ghost. And they cried out for fear, but immediately Jesus spoke to them, Be of good cheer, it is I, don't be afraid. Peter answered, Lord, if it's you, Command me to come to you on the water. So he said, come. And when Peter had come out of the boat, he walked on water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. And he cried out saying, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said, Oh, you of Little faith. Why did you doubt? Matthew 14, 22 through 31. Now you would have thought, okay, if I walked in water, I must have a lot of faith. No, he didn't. God himself was right there. Come to me. Now, if you can't obey God right in front of your face, when are you ever going to obey him? That's not great faith. 
you exercised a little faith. But when you got your eyes off God right in front of you, you sank. If you had great faith, your eyes would have been focused on the Lord, no matter how impossible it was. So again, can little faith obtain big results? Jesus himself told Peter, you have little faith. Oh, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? Now, we all say at least he walked on water, and yes, he did. But again, the accomplishment and, and, and the miracle, we would say, went to Jesus. Peter couldn't walk on water. Now, that's where we, we read in the beginning by grace. It was still grace. The grace of God that gave Peter the faith even to walk on water for a moment. So Peter shouldn't get the big head. And Jesus actually rebuked him. Oh, you of little faith. Why did you doubt? He didn't accomplish, oh, great things. You walked on water a little bit. He rebuked him. Because he wanted him to do much more. Keep your eyes on me. Keep your eyes on God. Don't look at the circumstances. That's your pride. You look at the circumstances, you compromise. We've got to get to the point we don't look at circumstances because things are getting increasingly more dangerous, more volatile. We, we need to develop our faith into great faith, every one of us. Notice 31, Jesus identifies the measure of Peter's faith. Oh, you of little faith. Why did you doubt? He measured his faith. I'd say Jesus was qualified to judge. We see that little faith may start out well, but it doesn't finish the job of receiving the answer or miracle because of not continuing to observe the word of God. You know, this is where sometimes people receive a healing and then they lose their healing. They get their eyes off God and now get back on the circumstances, the wind and waves. Oh, oh, but they said I should be in remission. I, I, I. And all of a sudden they're sick again. Where if they would just keep proclaiming they're healing and looking to God that I'm healed, not looking and listening to other people and even doctors at times. But you see many people who say I'm healed and then all of a sudden they're sick again. Because all of a sudden they quit looking to the miracle that got them healed and now they're looking right back to the people that want to treat them. Peter took his eyes off the word from Jesus to come to him on the water. He began to observe the wind and waves, which brought fear to his heart and he lost the miracle. Anytime we give the knowledge of the five senses precedent over the word of God, we will leave the faith realm and go down in the knowledge of those five senses in doubt. When he saw the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. When he saw, relying on himself, our pride. What are the five senses? Sight, taste, touch, hearing, smell. Takes no faith. It's real. That's why Timothy said, I must poke my hand into Jesus' palm to believe. He wasn't relying on faith. He was relying on the five senses, science, provable science. Now you got a lot of unprovable science and, and they call it science when it's nothing but theory and evolution and nonsense. Follow the science. Yeah, to your death, maybe. Science can be proven, not the theory of evolution or any other theory. Sight, taste, touch, hearing, smell. That's not faith. That's there. Okay, if I can touch it, I'll believe it. That's not faith. Doubting Thomas. I mean, forever to be known through history as Doubting Thomas, I don't think you'd want that. You know, you want it, you'd rather have something else in the Bible said about you than Doubting Thomas. 
We all use him as an illustration of a lack of faith. Relying on his five senses. I got to touch it to believe it. Okay, Thomas never did do a lot of great things for God. Not great faith. We also find Jesus commends great faith. And the two examples recorded in the Gospels of individuals who possessed great faith. Great faith is faith that can believe and act on God's word before seeing the results. Hebrews 11.1. 1. That's the chapter and book in the Bible of heroes. The substance of things hoped for, the evidence, proof of things not seen. Your evidence is you totally trust in the word of God, not in the senses. Science can be proven, but not today. You cannot rely on your five senses in the future if you want to walk by faith, and you're going to need your faith if you're going to survive. Point number two is the centurion's faith. Jesus had entered Capernaum. A centurion came to him pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. Only speak a word and my servant will be healed. For I'm a man under authority, having soldiers under me. But I say to this one, go, and he goes. To another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. Matthew 8, 5 through 10. So Jesus marveled at the faith of the Roman soldier who understood how authority works in the natural realm. Himself being a commander of a hundred soldiers who would obey his every command. The Sertorian recognized that Jesus had authority in the spiritual realm. His spoken word would be obeyed by the sickness in his servant. The sickness would obey the word of Jesus. Jesus made a teaching of the situation right away so the disciples would have a good example. Great faith, he said. Verse 10. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed his disciples, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. It appears Jesus is looking for great faith among the Jewish people who had received the word of God, but instead he found it in a Gentile with no biblical background who understood how authority works. He found great faith in another Gentile who was a woman of Canaan. Point number three, the Canaanite woman's faith. Matthew 12 or Matthew 15, 22 through 28. Behold, the woman of Canaan came from the region and cried out to him saying, have mercy on me. O Lord, son of David, my daughter is severely demon possessed. But he answered not a word. His disciples came and urged him saying, send her away. For she cries out after us. And he answered and said, I, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshiped him saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it's not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, yes, Lord, yet even little dogs eat the crumbs which falls from their master's table. Jesus answered and said to her, oh, woman. Great is your faith. Let it be as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Matthew 15, 22 through 28. Jesus test her faith again, just like he tested Peter that failed. Tested the centurion, centurion who passed and tested this woman. She wouldn't give up. You want a miracle? You've got to hold on to the word of God. You cannot let it go. You cannot allow doubt to enter into you. 
You can't let other people discourage you. Hold on to the word of God. The Gentile woman had no covenant rights to healing, not being a Jew, but she was willing to take Jesus at his word and she could not be denied. You know, Jesus came for all of us, but he came first to the house of Israel and that's what he focused on. Not that we're any less important, but he had a purpose, he had a mission, and then he was going to die in Jerusalem. Jesus is still looking for great faith in you and I today and his followers. A faith that has grown from little to great by taking God at his word. Luke 18, 8, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? We are in desperate times when faith is getting less and less and people are compromising the word of God and, and over 60% now of the church that says they're born again under the age of 40 said always lead to God. Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, every, Buddha, everybody. Will I find faith? Because that's not even saving faith, what they're saying. Will I even find faith? The Christian Post reported that 60% of born-again Christians in America under 40 years say Jesus is not the only way to salvation. Equal to Buddha, Mohammed. The communist organization known as the Federal Council of Churches is the forerunner of the National Council of Churches, NCC, with its Geneva parent organization, the World Council of Churches. The NCC leads dozens of Protestant, Orthodox, Anglican denominations, including Presbyterian, Episcopalian, Evangelical, Lutheran, United Methodist, and many others. These pastors back the United Nations anti-Judeo-Christian morality agenda of abortion, homosexuality, and all religions serving the same God. That's why so many of your politicians go there. The NCC has a Marxist heritage. America is self-destructing because the church, which is, which is supposed to be the glue, the salt of the nation, is lukewarm, backslidden, and dysfunctional. Instead of a measure of faith growing from little to great, we're even losing the measure of faith. Today, we must have our measure of faith that we all possess grow from little faith to great faith, to live a life of miracles and see a revival in America into part of the remnant, see God. Like Ezekiel, we speak the truth. We try to do our best to have a repentance. If not, we let our faith grow and the blood is not on us because we are going to represent God faithfully. We're going to see miracles. We're going to have peace in the storm. We will walk on water if we need to. God will provide manna if he has to because we believe in our measure of faith going from little to great, like the scriptures tell us about. Amen? Amen? May God richly bless you out there. Look to the Lord. Let your faith grow into great faith. God bless you.